Hi everyone, I'm Rebecca Virginia and today I have my much anticipated Halloween DIY video for 2024. I have created 13 brand new Halloween DIYs for you. These are my favorite videos to create every single year and I really hope that you enjoy all of the new crafts that I made. Let's start off with this spooky dripping candle set. This reminds me of something from Phantom of the Opera. I could just kind of imagine it in the background there. And it's so easy, you're pretty much just gonna be using a lot of trash for this. So over the last few weeks, I have collected toilet paper rolls and paper towel rolls, and I've cut them into all sorts of different sizes to make my faux candlesticks. Any kind of sizes you want, I cut some medium ones for the center of my candle set, some low ones, and then I had the tall paper towel rolls in the back. But you can create whatever kind of shape that you want. Again, I was looking for, you know, a melted kind of candle stack, something you'd see in the catacombs with Phantom of the Opera. I don't know, maybe because we had the Paris Olympics. Phantom of the Opera was just in my mind for this one. And once you have hot glued everything together, you're going to start making the drippy effects for the candles. I went in with my hot glue gun and it's really easy. I just put a bunch around the top circle part of our rolls and just naturally the hot glue started to drip down them. Once that was fully dried, I went in with some painter's tape. I'm going to be filling these in with tea lights. So to make sure that the tea lights don't fall through and you can actually see them, that tape is gonna act pretty much like a little basket the tea light can sit in. Then I took this outside and I spray painted it black. Highly recommend just using spray paint. It would take a very long time to actually paint every single one. And just so you could see the droopy parts of the candles a little bit better, I went in with a light gray paint just to really emphasize that. These black tea lights are from Amazon. I'll have them linked down below and they fit perfectly into the slots of my rolls. I love this DIY. If you follow me on Instagram or have been watching me for a while, then you probably know I'm a pretty big Disney fan. Last year for my Halloween video, I made some poison apples that were very similar to the ones that you would see in Snow White. So for this one, I kind of wanted to make almost like the witch's hand when she is handing the apple to Snow White. So I saw something similar on Instagram and absolutely loved the idea. So I wanted to make my own. I grabbed one of the wood plaques from Dollar Tree and spray painted it black and then hot glue down one of the skeleton hands also from the Dollar Tree. You could add some of the sticky command strips onto the back of this if you wanted to place it on a wall. But for me, since I am renting, I just had it leaning up and I added a little bit of the white creepy cloth to add that extra spooky evil witch effect. Next up is a little bit more on the cute side. We had some creepy DIYs and I think these jack-o'-lantern lights are pretty darn cute and they're also really easy to make. So Dollar Tree has these black candlesticks. I picked them up for a previous DIY where I made some bat candles. I'll have that linked up above. The Dollar Tree also sells these jack-o'-lantern tea light holders. So I'm going to be placing those on top of the candlesticks. But to add a little something extra, I wanted to make a skirt out of some some of this spider webs tool. So you could go through with a needle and thread, create a basting stitch around the ends and then pull it tight to create the ruching effect. But I just didn't wanna get out my needle and thread. So you can do the same thing just by using hot glue and just bunching the fabric all the way around your candlestick. Then it was time to give the tulle skirt a little bit of a haircut. So I'm just taking my scissors and trimming it off. I want it to be more so like poking out than a long tulle skirt. And once I placed the jack-o'-lantern tea light holder on top, I realized I wanted to cut it just a little bit more. This did get really messy because it's covered in glitter, which is kind of annoying. I saw in a couple comments on my last video, people said to spray it with hairspray. That keeps the glitter a little bit more holding onto the tool. So I'll have to try that next time. I gave you a brief cute DIY and then we are back into the gothic creepy Halloween DIYs with these skull bookends. I was looking at the Dollar Tree for actual bookends and couldn't find any. I could have sworn that they used to sell metal ones. I was going to attach that to the skull, but couldn't find them in this one. So I did have to improvise. I started off with one of these plastic skull heads. It was pretty hard to cut in half. So if you ever see the styrofoam skulls, I would recommend that for this DIY because it'll just be way easier to cut. 
But of course, when I was looking for the styrofoam skulls that I used in a DIY last year, I couldn't find them this year. So this is all that I could find. It was a little difficult to cut, but I still made do. Then I took some little bits of cardboard, I believe from an Amazon package in a square shape, and I hot glued those to the bottom of the skulls before taking it outside and spray painting everything black. Those cardboard pieces are going to slide under the books and are gonna be what helps to keep the skull halves staying upright when we place the books on them. Finally, to finish everything off and add a little bit of definition, I went in with some light gray paint. This way you were able to see all the different indentations and marks in the skulls, and it kind of made it pop a little bit more against the black backdrop. Black cats are a quintessential part of Halloween, but these ones are a little bit different because they are actually made out of pumpkins. This is a really cute DIY and you're just gonna need a few items from the Dollar Tree. So two things that I picked up from the Dollar Tree were the carvable pumpkins, and those are going to be the base or more so the body of the cats. So this one I picked up from Dollar Tree, and then this one I had in my craft stash. I picked it up about two years ago and just had never really used it, and I liked that it was foam underneath. So I'm gonna be using that, but of course you better believe I'm gonna be using that velvet for something else and definitely gonna be using the stem for something else too. So once you hot glue the smaller pumpkin on top of the larger pumpkin, you are going to want to paint it. I took these outside and gave them a nice coat of black spray paint. So next up, I cut out the ears for the cats and also the tails. So for this part, I am putting them on some kebab skewer sticks and I just added a little bit of tape to the back of them before hot gluing because I wasn't sure where I exactly wanted the cat ears to be. But once I played around with it a little bit and I figured out how I wanted everything to be placed, then I went in with the hot glue just to make everything permanent. And of course, so you wouldn't be seeing some bright blue paint on the back of those. And I did the exact same thing with the tails. So adding the bamboo skewer to the tail with just a little bit of tape, figuring out where exactly I want it to be. And then eventually I went back in, removed the blue tape and hot glued it. My cats needed some bows. So this is one of my favorite ways to make a really quick and easy bow. You take a tail, which is just gonna be a longer piece of ribbon, and then you'll take another piece of ribbon and make sure that it's a circle, pinch it in the center. And then I use a zip tie, but you could use jute, a pipe cleaner, really whatever you want to connect those two pieces together. I did have to use my teeth to tighten that zip tie. And then you can just fluff your bow and it is done, it's a really easy one, and then I added a little bit of hot glue. So I wanna show you guys again, just because this is one of my most done bows. So you're gonna have your tail here, your second piece, you make a circle, cinch it in the center, fluff out the sides of the bow, and then to connect them, I did a zip tie, cut off the excess, and then hot glue that onto our cat. The zip tie didn't really bother me. You could barely see it at the center of the bow, but usually I'll do something to go over it if I don't do it with jute or another piece of ribbon. So I actually had these stickers from a sticker sheet from Dollar Tree. One was a black cat and one was a bat. So I thought it really went with the bows on them. And then the last step was just trimming off the excess. And now we have got two adorable pumpkin cats. So this next DIY was probably my most ambitious one that I did. I had seen a lot of these at Grandin Road, Pottery Barn, lots of different hanging cauldrons, and they were super pricey. So I just wanted to make a smaller Dollar Tree version. So these wood dowels, they came in four to a pack at Dollar Tree, and then this larger piece of wood. I added a little bit of hot glue to the end of the wood plank, and that's how I attached the wood dowel. Then once that was completely dry, I needed to create an area where I'd be able to have another wood dowel hanging across from it. That's what the cauldrons are going to hang from. So to make sure that stayed in place, I took apart a clothespin and hot glued each of those. That way the wood dowel would sit perfectly in between each of them and wouldn't slide off. And also I wouldn't have to hot glue it because if I were to hot glue it, I wouldn't ever be able to take those cauldrons off. The four pack of wood dowels that I got, one was not enough to go across this, so I did have to hot glue two together. And I would recommend just going to Lowe's or getting a longer piece of wood because once I filled up the cauldrons with the candies, it did get a little heavy and it didn't break, but it looked really close to. So I would just invest in getting one long wood dowel instead of hot gluing the two together. 
this witch hat is definitely going to be on my door once it hits October. Right now I have my fall wreath up, but this is for sure going to be what I have on my door when all the trick-or-treaters come. It was super easy. I grabbed one of the witch forms from the Dollar Tree, took off all of that tinsel, and then I just wrapped it entirely with some jute. This jute I picked up from Walmart. If you've been watching me recently, you know I have been struggling to find the thin jute from Dollar Tree, but this thick one really worked well because I didn't have to use quite as much. Then to decorate the hat, I added some orange velvet ribbon that I picked up from Amazon. I'll have that link down below. I love the pop of color that it adds. I covered it with some twinkle lights and it was super easy. I just tucked the pack into the back of our witch's hat. And then as a little last accessory, I did take a plastic spider and painted this with some silver and black paint. I know I mentioned it earlier in the video, but in my Halloween video from last year, I recreated the poison apples from Snow White, and I wanted to do poison apples again, but a little different this time. So I actually took the two apples from last year and coated them in some black spray paint. Then I went in with my hot glue gun, and similar to how I did the drippy candles in the first DIY, I just coated it with some hot glue and pretty much just let the hot glue slide down the apple how it wanted. Then for the sticks that are going into the poison candy apples, I used some of the kebab skewers from Dollar Tree. You get a whole bunch in a pack, and since the apples are foam, they stuck down really easily into our apple. Once the hot glue was completely dry, I went in with some white paint, just painting all around them. And I also picked up these Halloween sprinkles from Target. They were $1.99 and I actually had a coupon for $2 off my purchase, so I got it for free. That is some girl math right there. And then once all of that had dried and the sprinkles were good and set, I covered the wood skewers with some brown paint and then started accessorizing. I had some spider fabric from the Dollar Tree so I cut that into strips and then tied that around the wood dowels in the apples and then I cut our wood skewers down a little bit because they were a little bit too tall and then I added on my poison labels. I'll link these ones down below if you want to use them. I just printed them out onto some thicker cardstock paper and then cut them, added a hole punch and tied them to the wood dowels with a little bit of jute. Our next DIY is a creepy one, but it's actually super simple to do, and you really only need two supplies, your skull and the candle. Again, I used the plastic skulls from Dollar Tree, but if you come across the foam skulls, I think those are a lot easier to work with. But again, I just couldn't find them in my stores. So I'm taking the plastic skull, and I did try my best to create a nice perfect circle at the top but of course that didn't really work out super well because we are dealing with plastic so once i cut out the hole at the top i added on the hot glue again dripping it all around so it looks like the candle that we're going to eventually be putting inside the top of the skull has been dripping down and once the hot glue was dried i took it outside and spray painted it with some white spray paint once that was dried, I brought it back inside and it was time to start dirtying up our skull. I put a lot of brown paint into the crevices of the skull. You can't see it super well on the video, but basically the eyes, the nose, the teeth, and any of the indentations, I put some brown paint in and then wiped it off with a wet wipe before kind of creating my own stain. I used the wet wipe and the brown paint and went all over our skull to really dirty it up and emphasize where the candle is dripping out. And the final step was adding in a tea light candle. This DIY is a cute and pretty easy one. You need minimal supplies, the main one being a pair of socks. So I picked up these socks from the Dollar Tree and I started off by cutting the foot section off and then turning it inside out so that the fuzzy material was showing. Next, I just started to stuff them. I picked up this fill from the crafters square section. If you see this in your stores, definitely pick it up. I think it's a really good deal to get this large bag for only $1.25. 
So after you have completed this step, there are a couple different ways to close off your ghost sock. Usually I go in with a clear elastic hair tie, but I am out of those right now. So for this one, I added a zip tie just to keep everything together. This did make it a little bit more circular than I wanted for my ghost. So for the second ghost, you'll see in a little bit that I actually just ended up sealing it with some hot glue. For the eyes, I picked up some vinyl from the Dollar Tree and cut out circles before placing those onto the socks. And lastly, for a added embellishment, I wanted some tags on our ghost. So I grabbed my burlap ribbon and just cut these into a square and frayed off the tops as well as the edges. Those are gonna go on each of the sock ghosts. And originally I was gonna either cut out a vinyl or try to write on the burlap, but then I remembered I had these stickers from Dollar Tree. So I grabbed one that said boo and one that said eek and placed those on top of our little burlap squares before hot glue those onto our ghosts. When I saw this gold frame at Dollar Tree, I thought it looked very haunted mansion and knew I wanted to do a ghost vignette. This is a super easy DIY, but I absolutely love how it turned out. It is definitely giving me all of the haunted mansion vibes. So we're going to be going in with some gauze to really create a spooky ghost. But first I wanted to lay down a stencil. So I did cut a ghost out of some vinyl and this is just going to basically be our template, almost like our coloring book image. And we're going to be coloring in our ghosts with some gauze to make it look extra spooky. So I did grab this gauze from the Dollar Tree and I'm just cutting it apart. I am removing the sides because you could really see the gauze bunching there. And I just started pulling it apart so it looked creepy like a ghost material and then started adding it on top of our ghost vinyl stencil with some Mod Podge. And once I had completely filled that up, I wanted to add a little bit more texture. So I went in with baking powder and Mod Podge to create a little bit more of a drippy effect and I did that mostly along the bottom of our ghost as well as the sides. To add a little bit more of a cute element to our ghost frame, I wanted the ghost to be holding a bouquet of flowers, so I picked these two out of a floral bunch that I had from the Dollar Tree. And originally I was going to just paint the eyes onto my ghost, but because of the gauze, it just wasn't coming out very nicely. So I ended up going back to the black vinyl and cutting two small black circles for the eyes. This next DIY is a skull art piece. It reminds me of something you would find in a spooky themed museum. And it was actually really easy to do. I saw something similar on Instagram and wanted to create my own using Dollar Tree supplies. I grabbed a bunch of the skulls from the Dollar Tree, as well as a plain white canvas. And I started by organizing the skulls on the canvas to see how many I would be able to fit in each line. I originally taped out the blue around the edges because I thought I was gonna spray paint this black, but I actually ended up deciding to spray paint it white. So kind of was a little bit pointless that I put down the tape, but I am gonna use it for some gold accents. So I just taped out little parts on the sides and the top and bottom so that I could go in with my gold paint. This is a really gorgeous gold metallic paint from Folk Art and I love the effect that it gives. So I added that to the sides and the top and bottom. Now that the skulls were spray painted with the white paint, I wanted to add in a little bit of a gold accent. So there were some veins on the top of the skulls as well as the eyes, nose, and teeth. So I went in with the gold metallic paint and then again just took a wet wipe to wipe off any of the excess. And for the skull that's gonna be going in the center, I wanted that one to be completely gold metallic. So I went in with a smaller detailed paintbrush to paint that one before hot gluing it down into the center to really be the focal point of this piece. A DIY or really a makeover that I've seen pretty much all over Pinterest, YouTube, Instagram is taking a painting and turning it into either a Halloween or an autumn one. I absolutely love this idea. I saw a lot of people go to their thrift stores and get these really big, gorgeous paintings. Uh, my thrift store did not have any of that stuff or the stuff that it did have was way too expensive, but I did pick up this little canvas painting from the Dollar Tree. It looked like a New York City street 
way back in the day, looked like maybe around winter time period since the trees were barren. And I decided this would be the perfect backdrop for my spooky painting. Instead of having empty trees, I added in red, yellow, and orange paint with a stippling brush as well as a sponge to create my fall leaves. And then I added a ghost on the street in one of the windows and right there on the sidewalk as well as some little orange circles that I will soon be turning into pumpkins. And instead of creating bats with black paint, I thought that was gonna be way too difficult to make tiny bats. I just went in with my Sharpie pen and started adding bats all the way around the top area of our city landscape. Once my ghost had dried, I went back in with my Sharpie marker to add in the ghost face. And also once my pumpkins were dried, I went back in with the Sharpie to add the faces of our jack-o'-lanterns. I really hope that you enjoyed all 13 of these brand new DIYs today. I had so much fun creating them and I hope that they give you some inspiration to DIY some of your own Halloween crafts this season. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, keep searching, keep creating.